My guest sees miracles before they actually take place. Then he just acts them out. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with John Carver. So what happens when you're an alcoholic, you have to have a drink every day to just go on, and you're minding your own business, so to speak, and you didn't know whether you were in a dream state or you had a vision, but what happened to you? Literally, I had a visitation from God, and he pretty much showed me that he loved me. Up at that point, I always thought religion was that you were going to go to hell and when you died if you didn't know Christ as your Savior. Nobody told me that God cared for me. They always told me that God was a punishing God, a God that didn't uh, have any mercy. That's all I ever heard. Uh, the Pentecostal type preaching mm -hmm. was hellfire and brimstone. This was new to me, to have a Savior come to me, Jesus Christ, and say that He loved me. Just was too much for me to, to comprehend. And uh, his... Did you, did you feel his love? Oh, yeah. What, what did it feel like? You, can't, you cannot look at the noonday sun, but he, the light from him, that it didn't shine through him, it came from him. And that, it was such a warmth, and I couldn't take my eyes off of him. And he just, through his eyes, and his nail-scarred hand that he stretched out to me, and when I touched it, I was totally set free from all the demonic powers that held me bound. What about having to drink every day? Didn't need it. I mean, just totally? To totally. What, just, what replaced it? You say you didn't need it. Just a peace. That's all I can tell you. It's just a, a total um, tranquility. I was a, my, uh, I, my brother-in-law told me I was a nervous wreck. Barbers are either uh, gamblers, alcoholics, or a nervous wreck. I, I and I was that. all three. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they generally say. The next time you had a visitation, you were reading a magazine about a famous uh, healing evangelist by the name of A.A. A. Allen, and what happened? I had pretty much the same experience where the, the presence and the power of God came to me and said, I will use you like this if you pass your test used like this in what way? There were all kinds of healings on there. People who had tumors, uh, wheelchair stretcher cases, people who had all kinds of ailments, uh, diseases, crippling diseases, uh, back troubles, uh, all kinds of, of uh, different th things that depicted on the front of that magazine. It was called Miracle Magazine and it had A.A. A. Allen praying for these people. And, when I looked at it, it was just a phenomenal experience that I took place. It, it's, it's hard to put in words. Uh, how many years ago was that? This was over 32 years ago. Well, have you passed the test? <laughs> well, I would like to think I have, because I see those things in my own ministry. Tell me a little bit about A.A. A. Allen. A.A. A. Allen was a very controversial minister. Uh, his, his ministry started 1950, went through 1970, June of 1970, when he passed away. But he had one of the most outstanding ministries of all the ministries that I've ever studied. Uh, it seemed that he had uh, a tremendous variety of gifts working, spiritual gifts working in his life. And he had a charisma about him that I don't think I've actually seen in anybody else. Uh, everybody's pretty much has their, a personality that's, that's depicted in one way or another. But he had one that would just surpass all those men uh, that I've studied. He knew things yes. before they would happen. Yeah, actually, he was very prophetic. Uh, he would have visions in advance of his meetings. And from listening to, we have 10,000 radio tapes, so listening to those tapes kind of gives us a window into his ministry. And what would happen, it'd be like a TV set come on, and he would see certain events. It would be like, uh, as a kid, sitting in a, a theater uh, when I was eight years old, they used to have previews of coming attractions. And you would get little clips 
mm-hmm. uh, what the movies were going to be in the weeks to come. Well, that's how I understand it to what happened in his ministry. And he would see events. And then when, the, when he would go into the tent meeting, just those, act it those, out. These, he, all he did was literally act it out. Now, John Carver has the best collection of archives. We have a video clip of A.A. A. Allen, and John said that what you're about ready to see doesn't exist right now on planet Earth to this level because we have a generation that have not understood the ways of God, but it's about ready to change. Let's look at A.A. A. Allen. I command this cancer die. Pass from the stomach. You double let this man eat. You cannot starve him to death. I claim life for this man. I curse this cancer in the name of Jesus. Lord, let these legs walk again. Let this body be supported again. Let this stomach receive food. Give this man strength tonight. Let the power of God go through him. Raise him in this bed this minute, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brother, in the name of Jesus, I command you, give up. In Jesus' name, I command blind eyes. See! I look fine. Woo. Come here. Real good. I haven't been seen. Like Come here. Oh, yes. Do you see the pastor? Yes, I do. How's he look? Well, he looks fine. <laughs> That A.A. A. Allen, I understand he was phenomenal with cancers. Yes. Um, my understanding is I've, I've talked to uh, physicians, and they've viewed some of these tapes, and they said for people to get up like that and are being prayed for is almost impossible because of the they condition. They don't have the energy. They, have the, they don't have any strength. Mm-hmm. And uh, he just had a supernatural ministry when it came to dealing with cancer. Almost automatic? Uh, I would say so, yes. That's, he also knew what would happen in the future. Now, he died in 1970, but he saw uh, what's going on in the world today. What did he say briefly? A terrorist attack on America. He saw that. He Anything saw after the terrorist attack did he see? Uh, not that I have told to recall except for the, the ways it was coming, the biological what, warfare. He saw biological warfare. Anything m- else? Missile attack, uh, whatever you want to define Imagine as Imagine an- that. In 1970, he saw these things. Well, we're going to see two more people, a man by the name of Branham that really intrigues me because he knew who had the faith to be healed. And I believe in Yeshua's name that many of you, that's Jesus' name, many of you are going to be healed as you see Branham will be right back with an actual clip of this great man of God. Don't go away. Hello YouTube, Mishpucha. Mishpucha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with John Carver. Did you see that video clip of A.A. Allen? And this man knew things before they happened. For instance, 
John Carver, you told me that he knew about certain attacks in America, uh, and, and this was in what year? Actually, in 1954, he had, he, he had what, this What did vision. he say? He saw the invasion of America through terrorism and germ warfare and gas warfare coming like a huge cloud coming down from Canada. And, and that's where some of them came from? Actually, yes, sir. Huh, that is amazing. Yeah. But the one that, as you know, uh, you're, you're an Allen fan. <laughs> right. I'm a Branham fan. Right. Tell me about Branham. Uh, William Branham had a tremendous visitation from God. Uh, that's the best I can explain to him. And God gifted him with a word of knowledge that everybody else has tried to pattern. Uh, he you just, can't pattern you can't this. Pat it comes right. from God. But the, he's the, but, the, but for those the watermark that don't know of a word of knowledge. A, so those that don't know what a word of knowledge is, explain that. A word of knowledge in, 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 in basic is that you get a word, not total knowledge from God, but a portion of knowledge, information, that comes from God about certain things, and then the person whom God is using conveys that. That's called prophecy. Now, actually, God operates that way through you also. Yes, he does, sir. Tell me about one thing that comes to mind where God either used a word of knowledge mm -hmm. or seeing an event before it happened. When I first was beginning to be used by God, uh, a word of knowledge came through a vision and showed me my meeting that I was going to go into, uh, my first revival meeting. And as I went there, exactly the people were there uh, who he said, and the thing that really topped it off, there was a man blind there that came in the prayer line who was healed. And I saw that in advance, so the, it gave me the faith. The first time that you the prayed very, for the someone. The very first time. But it, you don't need faith if you see it in advance. I mean, you know it's going to happen. Well, I, don't, I can't speak for everybody, but if I had to pray for somebody without God dealing with me about it, I'd be scared to death. What, what was it when they took pictures of Branham one picture had mm -hmm. something over his head. What was that? Well, they considered a, a supernatural sign from God, uh, putting more or less God's seal on him. And it was like a halo in a sense. And Almost like a fire. Right. Actually, on the, the, this prior to the video uh, clip, uh, he actually talked about that. I wish I would have left it in. And uh, uh, it's like, yeah, like a fire in right. a sense. You, you know, this was a photographer that was paid by someone that wanted to prove Branham was a fake. He took his picture, and when he saw what was on it, because he took it, he knew no one touched it up, he saw this almost like a halo, like a fire, a flame over his head. But forget that. Take a look at how this fellow Branham operated. Let's go to the clip. Uh, you know I'm waiting for something. That is true. It's the angel of the law. <laughs> That's true. I'm just as helpless as it could be, just like any of the rest of you. And I'm here, perhaps, with critics sitting here. How many... Sister, your conscience is something's going on, of course. It, it, it just now happened. Now, if that is true, let the people see by your uplifted hand. That's right, see. It's, that's that pre his presence. That's right, see. Now, I, I'm a stranger to you, never seeing in my life. And now, if the Holy Spirit that I have spoke of, of Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, if I have truly witnessed that to the people and declare it to be the truth, and he is the same, then he will reveal to me something to you that would help you to believe him. If you're here, I don't know what you have need of, whether it's, uh, but he does. Now, if God will permit that, would you accept your healing and, or, or whatever it is you want finance or whatever it is you're here to seek him for, to ask him about? or domestic troubles, whatever it might be, whatever it is, he'll know, and he'll be able to let me know. Is that right? Right. And that would make him the same as he talked to the woman at the well. Yes. Now, I'm only talking to you like he did to contact your spirit, and I see you moving from me. You're, you're, you've had a, I see a great crash of some sort. Yes. It's an accident. Yes, yes, And you, yes. it was a car uh, wreck. Yes. And you were thrown in the air yes. like that. Yes. And it's strained you in somewhere in your neck and it's caused a, a cancer yes. to come into your neck. Uh, or, and you believe that Jesus Christ makes you well? I do. Father God, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, on the authority of God's word by a dying woman, I ask this evil thing to leave her. Satan, you are exposed. 
So come out of the woman as the church of the living God calls for you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Now, sister, just a moment. I just want to talk to you. Of course, you know it's gone now. Oh, yes. It'll stay that way. See how your throat lefts? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the it's Lord. It's all gone from her. The, the garter has left her throat. And she is. God bless you. Go on your road now and be thankful. And happy and rejoice. And, and be That's amazing. John, would he know something about every single person that he had no way of knowing that was in that particular line? done inter interviews on ministers who have been in his meeting, and there was no way that he knew. They tried to trick him. They brought people up to try to, 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 to deceive him, and he knew. He would just automatically know. That gift just worked in him so phenomenally. Was, that, was everyone healed in that line? Pretty much. Pretty much. And he didn't pray for a lot of people at one time. They, they gave out prayer cards, and they numbered them, and he would only take a few. And, and by that time, he would be so exhausted because of this power on him. It just drained him, and he, was the, he, he would literally collapse at times. Listen, you think Branham's something, wait till you see Cole, the wild man. We'll be back right after this. Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with John Carver, who has archived some of the greatest healing ministers the world has ever known. And there was a wild man, literally, that, that's, that's a polite way of describing Jack Cole. Tell me a little bit about him. Jack Cole was a man who had simple faith in God. And if God told him to do something, he would do it. And by him doing that, created such controversy that people criticized his very bold and courageous faith, actually dangerous faith. Give where, me an example. Well, he would, uh, uh, he would pray for people and put his knee in their back, and he would literally reach up and, and, and grab a hold of tumors and squash them, and, and uh, just pull people out of wheelchairs, take their canes away and break them, and just he had a bold faith. It's, it's hard to describe this man. You've got to see it to believe it. But you kind of picked a lot of this up yourself by hanging around these videos and audios and books. For instance, there was someone with scoliosis. Right. Tell me about that person well, that, that you prayed for. Right. There was a lady who came into our meeting. There was about a, 125 people in that meeting. She was the very first person. And the pastor was very skeptical of miracles. And a boldness just came over me, and I just picked her. Her face was actually laying on her shoulder. And I like frozen. Yeah, like frozen. She uh -huh. came up like this, and her uh -huh. back was all twisted. And I just grabbed her head and put it back in place. But wait, what? What if you would have cracked her neck when Didn't you think did about that? that. Why did you do that? Because it was such a boldness on me. I mean, I, 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 there was just a power of God that was on me, a supernatural grace, and it doesn't happen all the time. But when it does happen, I know it, and um, I'm not afraid to, to move in her. All okay. fear is gone. You pulled her neck from like this which was frozen probably for many years. Oh, yeah, I would she think. was probably in her 70s. Huh, and you pulled it straight. She straightened right what up. What did she say? What did she do? Oh, she screamed and yelled and ran all over the place. Okay, what are we gonna see with Jack Cole in this video? Jack Cole is praying for two people who have tumor. Well, one is a, a growth in the, in the neck and another mm -hmm. lady has one on her arm. And uh, he just reaches and grabs it and squeezes it. I mean, can you imagine someone that would just grab a tumor with their hand and just squeeze it? Cancer, squeeze it. The power of God is so strong. Let's go to that clip right now of Jack Coe. Get ready. You're going to swallow this. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let this woman swallow this growth. Take your glasses off. How long have you had these old cross eyes? Since birth. Since birth. Yes, sir. Well, get ready for it to go straight now. You believe it? Yes, sir, I believe it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, these eyes have been crossed since this girl was born. God, I believe your word right now. God, straighten these eyes completely straight in the name of Jesus. Hand me a mirror, will you? Lord, for thy glory right now. 
Now look at him. <laughs> what do you make of that? Now turn around and show them. Raise your hands and praise God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! John Carver, I'm, I mean, you, you've been hanging around these videos, you've been hanging around these books, these cassette tapes. What went on inside of you when hours and, and, and you literally, that was your Bible school watching these things. What happened to you? Well, just in uh, Jack Coe's films, we did, we did those. It took us one year, one month, and one day, eight hours a day to transfer, to save them. And um, it built faith uh, in, in my heart that, that if God can use those people, he can use me. And that's what Can God he use you right now? Will you look in that camera and pray sure. for someone that is saying, why not me? Why can't I be healed? Sure, it's just a point of contact. Right now. Right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, with everybody that's in the uh, uh, television audience, put your hand on the TV, or if you can't do that, just raise your hands towards the picture and agree in prayer with me that if any two of us shall agree as touching anything, that means your disease, your disability, or whatever your problem may be, Jesus Christ can set you free right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I call for the healing power of Jesus Christ to come alive in everybody that's crippled, diseased, blind, cancer. In the name of Jesus Christ, be made whole right now, for the glove of God is there to help you through your situation. So be healed right now in Jesus' name and turn your faith loose. When you say turn your faith loose, what do you mean? If there's a point of contact, old Roberts used to say it years ago, there's a place where you make contact with God through His Word. His Word tells us that He loves us and that He's there to minister to us and releasing your faith. Everybody's got faith, but we just don't use it. Are you going to use your faith right now? There's an old expression, use it or lose it. He sent His Word and healed you. Someone's spine, I mean, I see it right now. Mm -hmm. Someone's spine, I'm wondering if you saw that too. Yeah. I almost feel like you did. Someone's I, spine was just straightened. Right, right. People who are with back problems, because that's why we use that example. The Holy Spirit knew that. And so people are being set free from that now. Anyone with a back problem, you heard what John said, reach towards it. How do you reach towards it? Well, what I would do is I'd stand up and I'd bend over and you are healed. <laughs> I mean, uh, you are healed. I mean, can you? Yeah. I, I can't see it, but I see it. Sure. It's happening all over the world. People are being healed. And once someone is healed of one thing, ha, all things are possible. See, it was demonic stuff that was stopping you from being able to walk pain free. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of infirmity that is, there's a spirit that is blindness, that is blinding you, deafness affecting your hearing, uh, pain, arthritis, all spirits of pain, I bind you, and spirits of nervousness, I bind you, spirits of fear, I bind you in Jesus' name, back you are healed in Jesus' name, I command all these spirits of infirmity be gone now in Jesus' name. And let, oh, here it comes. It's literally, John, can you feel it? It's yes, coming okay. right yeah. through the television. It's coming, just receive it. Whatever your need, do something you could not do because this is your moment now, right this second. Now, reach out, not tomorrow, not yesterday. Now, 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 now. Amen. I I'm agree getting excited <laughs> over this. How about you? Yes, sir, I'm <laughs> 